I'm going to give people about two to three minutes to get started here and, or to get in, and then we will get things started. Um, we do encourage everyone to use uh, the question box today. Uh, we're going to be going through a lot of things, and if you have any questions, we really recommend you use that. If you want to put in uh, where you're joining us from today, we always like to get to know a little bit more about everyone that's joining, so feel free to drop uh, your location in. And like I said, we will get things started here in just about two to three minutes. All right. It looks like we have a few people from all over uh, today, California, uh, Canada, it looks like New York. So we're really spread out. So good morning, good afternoon, uh, wherever you guys are today. We're going to go ahead and get things started. Thanks so much for spending some of your day with us. We are really excited about this webinar and we have so much to share with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. I'm Katie, the marketing manager here at Aratos, and I'll be your host for today. I've been in the tech world for about six years now, and I'm joined by two other great speakers, and I'll just briefly introduce them to you guys as well. On the far left of your screen, you'll see Aratos CEO or CTO Deepak Sood. Deepak has been a data management expert for almost 22 years now. He's presented on numerous topics at various SAP events and regularly contributes his expertise to enterprise business leaders. Next to him, you'll see Aratos Senior Director of Product Development and Operations, Feroz Arif. Feroz has over 25 years of experience with expertise in SAP data migrations, along with data analytics, SAP master data management, and data quality and governance. I have noticed quite a few new people on the webinar today, so I just wanted to give a brief overview of who Aratos is before we dive into the presentation. Aratos has been around for over 15 years now. We were founded in 2003, and we're based out of Orlando, Florida. On the next slide here, you'll see the Intelligent Enterprise slide from SAP, which I'm sure quite a few of you on the webinar today are familiar with. You can see here that the Intelligent Enterprise features three critical components, the application layer, the analytics layer, and the data management layer. At the bottom of the screen here in the red, you'll see that Aratos fits perfectly into that data management layer. Most of our solutions leverage EIM, ILM, and ECM technologies. At Aratos, we like to say that we make customers clean, lean, and compliant, and we're actually the only company that can handle your data quality, data volume, data privacy and compliance, data governance, and linked document, document management needs. We also do handle unstructured data through our partnership with Open Text. So now that we have um, introduced the speakers and given you guys a brief overview of who Aratos is, I'll dive into the part that you guys have all probably been waiting for, the agenda for today. So first, Deepak and Feroz are going to set the foundation for the webinar and go into exactly what is data migration, why you might be considering a data migration project, and then into the challenges you might face during your project. After that, we'll share 10 strategies that we've learned in our 20 plus years of data migration projects. And then lastly, we'll dive into the journey to S4 and a few additional strategies, specifically for those of you who are on or are currently road mapping your journey to S4. So with all of that being said, I will turn things over to Deepak to get things started. Deepak? Thank you, Katie. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another Auditas webinar, and uh, we really appreciate your attendance uh, joining this. Um, I am, uh, you know, going to kickstart just giving a quick introduction about, you know, we are covering data migration. And I'm sure in some form or fashion, you have been introduced to this topic, whether it is a migration of structural data or unstructured information. But more importantly, you know, what exactly in the ERP environment we are talking about, I'm going to pass the microphone over to Feroz, who is going to explain the conceptual guidelines of what data migration is, and then we're going to get into the meat of the presentation about why and how to address that. Thank you. Thank you, Deepak. And hello, everyone. And we're glad to be on this uh, webcast. And I hope that uh, we will be able to provide you with some good uh, information on data migration. So when we talk about data migration, what exactly is it? The technical definition is uh, that data migration is a process of moving data from one computer storage to another uh, computer storage tech. But the way we look at it is actually uh, moving data from maybe one application to another application. So data migration is uh, you know, taking data from, let's say, one of your legacy systems, and maybe you have implemented a new system, 
uh, moving that data across to the uh, new system would typically be called data migration. And when you are doing data migration, it's not just the movement of the data, but you also need to consider various other uh, factors when you move the data. So things like, let's say, what is the quality of the data? Does the data fit in to the new system? Is it uh, fit for the purpose that it has been designed in the new system? Uh, is that then, of course, there are a certain other data quality related uh, parameters like is the core data consistent uh, or is there any redundancy with the data? Uh, can the data be used properly in the target uh, business processes and so that you can you know achieve the organizational goals? So all these put together is actually data migration earlier. It used to be a very manual process, right? People used to use, uh, you know, Excel sheets and you know CSV files to move the data to transfer the data between different applications. But now, because of the complexity of uh, the process, because of the complex requirements of the target systems, the whole process has been automated. And now you have various tools available, which allow you to carry out many of the mundane tasks that you know, took a long time. And these free up the resources to you know, focus more on uh, the different value added uh, tasks that are specific to data migration. So that's about data migration. So why do we do data migration? What is the reason for us to do uh, data migration? The reason, uh, if we go to the uh, next slide, uh, Deepak, uh, when we look at the data migration, I, I don't see this slide moving. All right, okay. So um, when, when, when do we need migration? What are the occasions that uh, you know, we require uh, data migration one would be like let's say you are uh, you know upgrading your uh, erp or uh, let's say you know you have uh, an erp or a hcm crm system and you're going to upgrade it to a new uh, version of it then you might need to move your data from the source system to the target system let us say if um, your company is acquiring uh, different organizations you know there are you're doing some mergers and acquisitions and these are new system, new companies which need to be brought into uh, your company's system. And you know they have their own data available, and they have their own. They are following their own systems. So then, if you want to homogenize the system across all your mergers and acquisitions, then you need to take in their data and you know use it within your system to be able to uh, you know manage those organizations. Let's say uh, another example could be like moving to S4 HANA, right? So uh, so I don't know, uh, some of you could be uh, using currently SAP and uh, SAP's ECC version is what uh, you could be using and you could be you know, looking at moving to S4 HANA. So as we will see a little later uh, in, during this presentation, there are different ways in which you can move to S4 HANA and one of them requires you to actually move your data from your source system into the target HANA system. So these yeah, are the... Yeah, yeah. I, sorry. Go ahead. Finish your thought, and then I'll. I mean, I was just saying that these are some of the ways where the reasons for doing data uh, data migration and when you would need to do data migration. That's yeah. It. I, I just wanted to extend the thought that you know we were trying to to just look at it from different angles, like you know um, migration as a holistic word. If you if you put it in a macro way, you know there are a lot of things that come into play these days. Uh, from a migration process perspective um you know we, we talked about the fact that hey these are the core events that that will help you move from one application to another or you know you are doing m a activity and if you even have to do any kind of divesting and you want to take some data out you're going to be looking at that or you know if you are you know going towards s4 hana you know the different strategies that we're going to cover later in the presentation but then here is another dimension around what about the fact that you are changing your way you are handling the data uh, iot is coming um, big data coming you are building your data lake scenario and maybe just maybe in some areas you are building a process where you have to migrate the data onto that platform another situation that comes along with that is handling unstructured information um, you know and you might be migrating from one platform to another so there are so many different areas or um, angles that come along with that um, you know that you know migration has its 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 uh, its footing in all of those areas. How do we make it happen? How do you put it all together? Is something that you know 
that you have to look into. And we'll cover all of those areas, especially the 10 strategies that you have to holistically look at to make sure that you are covering all of those things. But bottom line, what is it that you're trying to do with this exercise? I think, and, and, and from our team perspective, the core piece that comes along with that is your business continuity. You do not want a break. You do not want a downtime. You do not want any kind of uh, inconsistency, whether it is in your business processes or whether it is getting the right information in your environment to be impacted in any shape or format. A two data migration project will lend you not only in, you know, with a continued business process, but with enhanced business processes as you're leveraging new tools and new technologies, you know, putting the things together. So what exactly are we looking at in a, a true data migration initiative? We are, of course, talking about, um, you know, incorporating or looking at, I'm gonna start from the right-hand side on the code page. You might have built certain processes where you are fetching information from some certain third-party application, uh, maybe even uh, obfuscating some data, cleansing some information, or borrowing and updating your already existing information. And you might have built some code around that. Now, as part of the migration process, you might be looking into how am I going to enhance the code? Maybe the programming language change in the new environment out there. There might be some change in the processes, new technologies coming in, uh, you know, there are you know, new applications, there are, uh, you know, uh, areas where a new uh, functionality is coming on where the whole process become a lot more efficient. That might lend itself into business continuity as well as a migration initiative. And last but not the least, you are also doing migration of documents, whether it is for compliance, whether it is for, um, you know, linking your structural data with unstructured information. Those are all the things that you have to look into for how you're gonna migrate, make sure you have a really efficient business process. But the meat of our presentation today is to discuss how do we address data? Now, mind you, we do all aspects of this migration and, and we have done it so many times over that you know, um, you know, we can really give you examples and situations where what thing is gonna work and what thing is not gonna work. But you know, today, our core objective is to address a structural data process where you're looking at the master data, the transactional data, and linked config data, and Freos is going to provide some more insights into it. Yeah, thanks Deepak, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, so like Deepak was mentioning, business continuity is definitely a key, uh, you know, driver for data migration. Let's say, you know, you have some uh, open invoices, you've sold some goods to customers, you have details of that in your older system. Obviously, you want to move that to your new system and ensure that, you know, all the you know events that had happened earlier you know people owed you money and things like that you need you're keeping track of it in your previous system you want to ensure that you know that business continues and you're able to you know handle those transactions and then of course the new ones as well uh, within the uh, system and that's why you know we, we talk about uh, business continuity and it's good to understand it from that perspective right it kind of helps you understand what is what are the kind of uh, you know data what is the kind of things that you need to bring uh, to the target system right once you have this clarity that you know you need to ensure business continuity and like uh, deepak alluded to there are various different business processes also which you have to look at which need to be brought forward to the new system for instance uh, you know we we are, we are currently doing a project with a customer where we are actually migrating uh, documents from a legacy system to a newer system and uh, so we can migrate all the documents and then suddenly one thing we discovered was that uh, the customer was uh, using a certain process for ingesting documents into the old system so if that were to continue that business were to con you know they we had to continue that particular process so in the new system also we have to implement that same process otherwise the data or the documents will not move into the uh, new system moving forward. So that's why you need to consider all these different aspects. But in our case here, we are going to focus on data. And, uh, you know, here we are talking about master data, like your customer, vendor, uh, suppliers, equipment, things like that. And then, of course, transactions. In the transactions, you have to look at uh, the so-called open transactions, uh, like you've raised a purchase order on a particular supplier. They have not yet supplied uh, things. So that particular transaction needs to be moved across to the target system. 
or sometimes you might have certain historical uh, data you know which is uh, like all the different uh, um, transactions that occurred your sales that occurred you want to bring that across those would be some of the closed transactions and you might also want to bring in some of the configuration information so how do you go about doing all this you know what are all the different activities that you need to do as a part of uh, data migration so data migration for the one of the first things you would do is actually an analysis to understand what is the scope of the data migration what are all the different data uh, sources that are available to you and what are all the different types of data like we mentioned masters uh, transactions configuration what are the kind of information that you need to bring in and of course also you need to be able to, uh, during your analysis phase you have to identify what is the uh, quality of your data right and then uh, based on the quality of the uh, data then you have to cleanse the data perhaps and some of the newer ERPs might require additional information and the process of uh, providing additional information is called enrichment so that's data cleansing and enrichment there might be differences between your source and the target system uh, the target system might have a different database it might have you know different nomenclature for the fields and the source system would have its own nomenclature and different types of fields there has to be a mapping between the two uh, so that is also an integral part of the data migration then of course there is the um, development of the migration programs itself all right or maybe you could say it's the implementation of a migration tool which will actually take the data implement all the different mapping rules and then move the data across to your target system then as a part of the process you have to do trial migrations you have to test out the migration ensure that you know it is working properly and uh, that the data is being moved across the rules are being implemented and once these migration trial migrations are done and you are satisfied with the results then you move on to the productive load or when you load the data into the actual target production system and once it has been loaded into the production system you would validate that data to ensure that you know the right data has been loaded and the business users are able to accept that particular data and uh, once that is done then of course there are there will be a period of support uh, so data migration needs to actually take care of all these different activities right yeah. Uh, and since we are dealing with data, there is also a cer certain context, um, a data management concept context that you need to actually consider. And uh, Deepak will talk about that. Uh, and yeah, that's nice. Thank you, Bruce. So one thing, you know, very unique to data migration out there. And and, and I find and I, I with, you know, we do so many different projects and, and you know, in the data space. Data migration is one project where I, you know, many times I state that there is, you know, you make your project successful, the more you test this specific area, your trial migrations, you're going to get so much more insights out there, you know, with your data, with your data quality, with your config, with, with the right content, the more you run your migration. So many times when we are building these migration processes and our project plans and all, we want to make sure we have done all of those exercises as quickly as possible and we spend some good amount of time in that space but coming back to the context of data management you know i, I really you know like this slide because you know we, we address it from multiple angles see data migration if you just say that okay well i have my event of you know migrating the data and i have to move to the new erp application and and let's get it over with let's do the project that's one way of handling it but what about the implications of it? You know, what about the fact that your new platform could have equally polluted data coming in from your source system? What about the fact that you might not need all the data, whether it is from a volume perspective, where you say, hey, let me tier my data, let me segment my data and only move the data that I need. Considering a situation around quality, and we're gonna, we're gonna touch about quality quite a bit in this webinar, so you know, stay with us on that. But what I'm finding is privacy, governance these things have become now really critical so consider the fact that um you know whether it is the gdpr you know which you know which we all know has come and and, and it is becoming more and more uh, important these days uh, you know with the, the new rulings coming in california data protection act ccpa now is called cpra has got some now really really sharp teeth into 
in, into uh, you know how you are going to address the privacy needs. Um, you know, there are other states in the United States, and for those of you who are coming from a global company, there are different governance and privacy requirements coming from the, you know Canada, from China, from India, and that you have to adhere to. Now, would it be a one-time activity that you're going to be doing it? Not necessarily. Migration will be part and parcel of a one-time activity, but that exercise has to be built in such a way that you build your process to address it on a regular basis also after that. That lends itself directly into governance, compliance, and privacy, and as we touch the subject of you know, the linked documents. You know, we at one point we said, hey, the databases have gone, the unstructured information, the PDFs, the paper documents are going to be gone. Surprises are that still 80% of the workspace is being done on unstructured information. As a matter of fact, unstructured information has expanded, whether it is the information coming from Twitter feed and, and your social media feed based on which you are building the intelligence. So whether it is migration or compliance, you're still looking at all of those things all coming along. And, you know, so from a process perspective, you know, we have to address not only the need of just migrating, but we have to address all the other requirements around it, whether it is, uh, you know, identification of the data that is linked with TII, uh, whether it is, you know, identifying that, hey, this is dormant data, historical data, do I really need it? Um, you know, making sure that you're able to reduce the volume. I mean, many of these companies will say that I'm paying licenses for my, for purchasing the databases, for purchasing the software licenses for the really large volume. I'm also paying for the hardware, no matter if I'm going to cloud or on-premise solution, it is still a good amount that I'm paying. Why am I doing that? You know, is there a better way of doing it? This is all part and parcel of, um, you know, of, uh, the whole migration piece, as well as, uh, you know, up, uh, obfuscation of the data. You know, you, you will find that this is something that is coming day in and day out. So it is not a one-time activity that you have to do, but you have to prep yourself for doing it in a continued state. Feroz, you want to add something to it? No, I, I think that is perfect, Deepak. Um, yeah, see, the thing is we have to have a holistic view about data. And you know that again brings out all these different uh, you know new things that you need to take care of, uh, like you mentioned you know the PII or the perf personally identifiable information, and then looking at data which has been dormant within your system, and uh, you know how do you want to handle it? Do you want to bring it in, or do you want to leave it in the old system? Do you want to destroy it? You know those are all things which you need to consider when you are actually moving to a new system, and that becomes a part of the data migration. So. Now we move on to the next section where we are going to talk about some of the challenges of uh, data migration. And um, I th one of the key goals for uh, data migration is to be able to go live with no business disruption, right? Um, so to be able to do that, you have to ensure that you have the best quality of data within the system, which will support your you know, different business processes. Uh, also, when you move to a new system, you need to ensure that the users uh, will adopt your system. Right? So they have to be able to use the system effectively and data definitely drives that particular uh, area as well. And of course, uh, when you talk about data, data is actually, to me, it's one of the few things which is full of surprises. Right? You can set various rules and things like that, but you will always find a set of data which does not you know, uh, like adhere to that specific rule. So data could cause a lot of different surprises, which could relay, could which could lead to delays in your uh, project, right? And when I say that you know data causes surprises, it is again different quality issues which kind of impact uh, the migration. That because of certain data quality issues, you are not able to move the data into your target system. And when you're not able to do that, definitely your, you know, go live and things like that are going to get uh, delayed. So right. these are, you know, some of the major challenges that you have uh, in, uh, you know, when you look at data migrations. And right. And 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 you would what you will find out here is that, you know, from from the surface level, this is one of those projects that looks quite straightforward. You know, hey, it's seamless. We we have X, we have to move to Y, just convert the formats, convert the fields, move it to the different tables, what is required, be done with. But here are some details that we are finding. 
in the industry for the data migration projects, you will find that there is a significant amount of data management issue that, uh, that you're gonna face when, you do, when you're going to do this kind of exercise. So we are listing the sources out there. This is not some numbers that we have created. You will find that you know, organizations who are doing it, um, they constantly struggle with this. So and, you know, that doesn't mean that 93% of the organizations did not hire the right consulting organizations or, or, or their data was totally messed up. That's not the case. It's the fact that the, the granularity, the attention to detail for doing these things uh, require uh, you know, a lot more focus. I mean, data migration, many times you will see in, in organizations when they do a data migration project, it's part of a bigger initiative. You know, you, you will say, hey, I'm moving to S4 here, I have to do data migration. I'm doing this exercise, a segmentation of it is data migration equity. In many ways, from a process perspective, it makes sense. But what you will find is data migration can become a, a, a beast of its own. Data migration, you know, many times you need to look into as a solo project. And yes, you will have your precursor, your prerequisites of data migration towards go live, but that's what caused these kind of situations where you have um, you know, migration failure that could cause a significant cost overrun and delays. Why? Because you have put this as a prerequisite and now your hardware, your user acceptance testing, your users and, 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 and end users who are waiting for go live are waiting on migration activity to be done right. You will also find that you know these are the situations that will cause 80% of the time um, you know budget overruns coming along and this is something that Bloor Group has mentioned, Gardner Group has mentioned, and also ASEC Forum has mentioned. So our effort out here is to say that you know if you are going to address this exercise, do not take it leniently. Do not think that this is part of the bigger project and you know it's all conversion that somebody will be able to do it. This is something that comes back and bite you and 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 can really, really hurt you in the bigger initiatives or in the bigger picture. So how, you know, I have made those statements and I have given you some survey examples and all, um, you know, but you might ask that, why is it that you are stating that? So on the top of the screen, you know, I'm showing you, you know, here's your legacy system. You want to move on to that platform. How do we perceive it? Well, extract the data, transform it as part of, your ETL process, upload it onto the new platform, and you're good to go. But as Feroz has talked about a little bit further, we underestimated the complexity of this whole information. Primarily that even if you're moving from a legacy platform or you're moving from ECC over to S4, the, you know, the concepts around business partners and all, you are finding that these structures are changing quite a bit. If you are you know, using certain third-party validations to update your master data record to update the information and, and you know, of the description, maybe the images linked along with it or certain other attributes, how does it all come together? Do you do an overwrite? Do you do uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a mapping or a, or a comparison to address those things? Your quality, qualified resources to do this work many times are ignored also. So see, as as you know as as uh, you know as we talked earlier along with pros that uh, you know data has a lot of surprises along with it so is it just you know executing the migration process and it is done not necessarily you will find that those scenarios day in and day out when you're going to do your trial runs that you're going to see all the deviations that are happening you need qualified scenarios who can quickly say yes i have seen this before i have done it people like feroz who have been living and breathing this exercise or this this situation for the past 22 years, they have seen all the variations of how this data uh, could surprise you or information might not be coming accurately and how to quickly address that part that is going to be beneficial, not only in the short term, but in the long term. Approach for migration. You are constantly looking at the process of updating your approach, not the macro approach, but small pieces, you might have to create certain exceptions handling. You might have to create certain other minute process that will address certain other additional attributes that you're bringing in. And that is again, um, you're looking at, and then not only the fact that, you know, you have a, a, a huge data quality issues that you are always going to deal with. This is not to say that, you know, your data is bad. 
but data is one thing. Data quality is one thing that you start at 100% as the time passes by, it degrades. This is, this is its nature. It is by default. It happens like that. You, you cannot change that part. So these are all the challenges, for the most part, that you have to address. How do we address? You know, we try to look into it from, of course, having the right knowledge, looking and identifying and, and seeing your data from, uh, you know, uh, from a, not only a macro perspective, but also from an analytics and micro perspective to see, okay, these are the different diversities and, and variations you have in your data. How are we gonna address it? Well, of course we can write scripts and we can you know, address all of those requirements for you, but many times having the right tool makes a huge difference on-premise based tool, cloud-based tool. I mean, you know, we, we, we had one example where, you know, a customer said that, look, I purchased a cloud-based solution. I have so many terabytes of data, but my, my deployment is on-premise. And all of a sudden now they are saying, oh, wait a minute. If I have to do a migration, my ETL tool is a cloud-based solution, but my, my, all my data that I'm gonna be migrating is all on-premise. What is my network traffic? What is my overall performance? Do I have to have an increased downtime and cutover and all? Those are all the things that you need to look into having the right tool at the right location. And it all comes together into having the right methodology. So this is all what we live and breathe in. And, and, and we address all of those requirements holistically for our customers. And we have got uh, you know, a large number of references that we'll be happy to share with you as we go forward. But you know, what are the different strategies that you want to look into as part of the migration project? This is, I'm gonna request Feroz to cover uh, you know, in, in detail and also share some examples of how it, you know, what was the problem and the, you know, how we ended up able to address it. Feroz? Yeah, yeah, Deepak. So I think, Deepak, one of the things which uh, you know, we've seen is that data migration is not just a technical uh, activity, right? Like uh, you were showing earlier that uh, data is being extracted from the different uh, tables and then being loaded. It, so it's not just technical, it's not just, uh, you know, like a program that has been used to, you know, convert your data. Like, let me give you an example. Uh, we were working with uh, one of uh, the leading, uh, you know, um, uh, oil and gas companies in Canada, and we were doing a data migration project for them. And uh, they were looking at the vendors that they wanted to migrate from their source system to the target system, right? Then suddenly, one of the things that, uh, you know, we said that, you know, you have to look at, uh, or they had about 60,000 vendors. And uh, then, of course, naturally, the question came up that, do you really need these 60,000 vendors in your uh, target system? Isn't it, shouldn't we be actually uh, rationalizing the uh, vendors? And shouldn't we be looking at, you know, uh, what exactly these roles are the vendors playing? And th we provided them with a simple rule where we said that, look at the, the amount of business that you've done with your vendor. And we set a, a very low target of uh, say about you know, uh, $11,000. We said, uh, if you have done $11,000 worth of business with a particular vendor in the previous few years, you, then you can bring them forward. And when we set that rule, immediately uh, the number of uh, you know, uh, uh, vendors went down to 5,000. So that is when we, we then had to migrate only 5,000. But of course, then business came back and then they said, no, they needed some other additional, uh, you know, vendors because of X, Y, Z reason. And so that went up. And again, maybe we migrated about 15,000 vendors. So we started with about 60,000 vendors and then we ended up with migrating only 15,000 vendors. But And this is not a technical issue, right? This is something which is more to do with uh, the business and to do with things like, you know, vendor rationalization which is all a part of the data migration, right? You need to look at, so that's why you need to look at uh, data migration. It's not just a, a IT initiative, but it is a business in initiative. And one of the key things which is highlighted in this first strategy is that uh, you need to perform a data health check. 90% of the issues that you have with in data migration are related to data quality, right? So you have to start off with doing a simple data health check to assess the quality of your current data, to see how good the data is, uh, what are uh, you know what are all the old data definitions, the new de data definitions, do the formats match? Uh, are there you know any uh, issues between the two different formats? How should we you know plan for them? How should we uh, you know uh, account for them? 
so you need to have an understanding of this so these are all like these different strategies that we're talking about they help de-risk your project right supposing if there is a mismatch between your source system and your target system and at a later point in time you know you suddenly discover uh, this particular thing uh, maybe two weeks before you go live then it is going to seriously impact the go live of your particular project so you have to do a data health check you know right up front and then the next part is of course to look at the data quality itself right what what how good is the data uh, when we say data quality data quality you have to have certain definitions in place which is also a part of some of the uh, strategies that we are talking about but uh, data has to serve uh, and support the new processes so does the data support that so you have to check and see whether the data is able to uh, you know support the new processes whether there is any there are any duplicates uh, whether uh, you can use it like for instance if you look at uh, say in in sap uh, maybe in a legacy system you have let's say a vendor master which just comprises of uh, a, a name for the vendor and then maybe an address for the vendor and that is the vendor master but if you take a look at sap there's so much more information that needs to be provided uh, there might be things like uh, your reconciliation accounts uh, there might be different vendor roles there might be you know multiple um, uh, addresses and things like that which you need to take care for a particular vendor maybe there is a, uh, an invoicing uh, vendor there is a the, there is a particular um, let's say uh, there is a purchase order which needs to be placed on uh, you know a specific vendor location and things like that so all those kind of information which drive the business processes within uh, the you know erp need to be taken care of and that's what you know you have to look at from a data quality standpoint um, then there will be a lot of different business rules uh, you need to validate and define these business rules again these these things are uh, you need to do it up front right you cannot wait for it to be done at a later later point in time right uh, you cannot just simply get started and then start doing the migration and then start then you know once the data starts failing then you start running behind that to find out what the issues are so but you have to look at your data you have to look at your target system you have to see what are all the you know different business rules that have to be applied i mean these business rules can be you know something very simple uh, like for instance you might have a rule uh, which says that um, let you have a, 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 a supplier from overseas so then you have to you know for all overseas suppliers you have to have uh, some withholding tax right so a withholding tax field and the amount of withholding tax becomes a mandatory uh, field for uh, overseas vendors so that is a business rule that needs to be you know implemented within your system so you have to be able to look at all these different system business rules and define them up front as you do your data migration moving on to the next uh, uh, strategy uh, you have to determine the purpose of the data right so there is uh, like we were saying uh, like i said you know we had this 67000 uh, vendors right do we need all these 67000 vendors in the new system or let us say there is there are some 10 year old transactions do we need to bring those transactions into the new system what is the purpose for that particular data uh, somebody might say oh we need these 10 years of data because we do regular data analysis and we need to know how our sales has been changing and that is going to impact how uh, you know our future uh, you know our our policies will be affected by that and hence we have to bring in that data so you have to determine the purpose of the data and may, typically people will just blindly say okay bring over that data you know whatever data set we have but you have to look at what is the purpose for the data and then uh, bring that data forward and the next thing is like to ensure that you have data governance you know data governance should be established now there will be when you look at the data you have you know numerous different types of data numerous uh, you know different uh, even to each of the sets of data there are numerous facets right so you have to have a organization structure in place to be able to identify and say what are the business rules what is the good quality data uh, you know and you have to have a data governance structure in place and that governance structure will also specify who owns the data right 
and uh, who says that the data is of the right quality and uh, you know so you have to have that governance structure in place then another thing is like uh, whenever the data migration is done uh, you know you would have uh, a third party or uh, another organization you know come in and do the data migration for you but you have to take responsibility for the data <clears throat> like i mentioned data migration and uh, data quality these are not actually it issues they are more like business issues right and so you have to take ownership of the data because your people understand the data they know what is uh, you know how the data has been used and how they will be using the data so you have to take internal responsibility so that is one of the key things like uh, you know for the success of any data migration project and um, of course and uh, this tool this thing is like you cannot rely upon the tool 100% and this goes back to what i have been saying and again the, the risk of sounding like a scratched record uh, data migration is not a technical issue it's a business issue right uh, <clears throat> and this alludes to what uh, uh, deepak had mentioned earlier you know you you have to validate you have to do your trial migrations and you have to do these validations frequently and throughout the process one of the issues with data quality is that some of the data quality uh, can be fixed through automated means but there might be some other issues which might require you know manual means uh, for instance let's say if your if your vendors are missing let's say uh, a bank account number you want to implement auto payment to vendors and for that you know you need to have your vendors bank account details and let's say if you do not have uh, the bank account details naturally that vendor master or that particular record is not going to load and it's going to fail so how will you get this information this information cannot be uh, you know it cannot be imputed it cannot be you know assumed or it cannot be taken from somewhere else you have to actually approach your vendor and you have to get that information from them right so it will require a manual process and if you did not validate your data and did not know of this earlier then it will take a long time to get that data and it will have an impact on your data uh, go live your system go live and again you have to engage your business the business are the people who know what the data is they are the ones who know how the data is to be used and they know what is good quality data so and the final one is of course you have to measure the impact of your you know data related activities right so you know there is the law of diminishing returns right so you might start working on cleansing your data so how good does your data have to become do you have to uh, does it have to be 100% clean is 90% acceptable so sometimes with the effort that is required to you know move from 90% to 100% would be very much higher so at that time you have to actually take a call and decide whether you want to do that or not but that depends upon the impact that the data has on uh, the business processes and your moving forward scenarios so you have to be able to measure the impact of your activities and then decide uh, you know how much of it you want to do before uh, you want to uh, you know stop those activities and then continue with your uh, data uh, migration right. so so I these are the different strategies which uh, you know we have uh, picked up from our uh, you know experience working with various uh, you know organizations go ahead deepak you were about to say something no i, I just wanted to address um also give you a bit that uh, if you want to get water that you know we we do this exercise with a data quality health check we we want to make sure that you guys are able to recognize all of those issues potential issues that may or you may or may not have in your exercise way before you get into this project the last thing you want to do is hey i have scoped the work i have got you know i have secured the funds and all oops there was a surprise and that is going to cause us a delay over time over budget change orders and all those things what we try to do you know early on is we do a data quality health check data quality assessment where we are able to quantify all of those things for you we are able to present the outcome for you of how does it come what are the things that we are looking at you know as part of this migration project so that your project so to say is as boring as possible um and our approach is a three-step approach number one assess you know in this we look at your system we look at your data we we try to quantify 
what are the different areas that needs any kind of changes, updates, manual or, or systematic, or, or for that matter, using tools or any other business process functions that might come along with that. Um, we address it. So, you know, of course, you will find that we address that as part of the migration activity. But, you know, both Feroz and I alluded to the fact that, hey, there could be situations that is just not a one-time activity. You want to automate those processes to constantly sustain your data quality to a high level. So what are the things you need to do? We cover those activities as part of our data quality assessment. Um, you know, we provide you with business insights, whether it is linked with customer vendors or any kind of, uh, you know, uh, any kind of master data in the system for, you know, data quality for master data records. But that is not to say that, hey, we don't do transactional records. We do, as a matter of fact, we have, a, you know, a solution, a whole, uh, you know, a, a proper solutions around transactional data governance that comes along with that. This is something that we cover this whole exercise within 10 business days. And here are some of the requirements like a basis stuff for about two hours for us to link to the system, to access that information, analyze that data and provide you core insights into it. Now, the thing that, you know, many times you might be stating is that, okay, you're giving me all the GAN on all the details around, uh, you know, how, um, you know, this data migration process works, but my core insight, my core objective out here is to do S4 migration. Where is data migration process necessary in my S4 HANA migration initiatives? So I, we have tried to consolidate these pieces into these three areas. You know, there are three transitional scenarios in S4 migration. You have a greenfield deployment, which is called the new implementation. You have a brownfield deployment, which is also called system conversion. And then you have a migration activity or consolidation coming along with that, which is called landscape transformation, where you are consolidating multiple systems. Greenfield solution, you are primarily looking at migrating into a totally new platform. You're gonna configure, you're gonna do all the configuration onto the new systems. But what you're looking at more importantly is that you're gonna be migrating your master data records and for the most part, open transactional records. Tools like migrating using data services and information steward would be really valuable for you to address those activities. There are some certified Solex solutions that are available in the market like the ADM solution from Synity that you can leverage for putting those solutions together. System conversion is something that has come a long way. You know, in the earlier uh, scenarios from moving from ECC, you will find that the, 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 the DMO, the, the SUM tool, as well as the DMO process was not addressing all the requir requirements for you to do a brownfield deployment. And now there is an evolution of brownfield to even to bluefield deployment where you are updating certain customized scenarios that you might have. But in those unique cases, you are still doing a migration activity, but more using the SUM tool and the DMO process around it. That is not to say that, you know, in S4 HANA, there are some other concepts that have come. For example, business partner, you know, where now your, uh, you know, uh, you, uh, you know, your customer vendors and all our and employees are considered part of business partner. And you have to go through CVI uh, process, you know, which is the customer vendor interface where you will have to convert all your master data into a business pro partner process, which is true for all of those three scenarios. And last but not the least, you're using the system landscape SLT process, transformation process, again, again, as part of the migration process where you're consolidating the system, all of them require the data migration activity. Now, you know, what are the things that you need to look into? You will find that peering of the data, segmenting the data is critical, and that's where archiving, certain kind of deletion of redundant information, doing compliance and privacy and getting rid of the data before you move on to the next platform has really strong ROI. We have found customers who have data to the tune of 27 terabytes and we are able to reduce it down to 11 terabytes in spite of them doing archiving. Why? Because we were able to identify all of that data for them and imagine the amount of ROI from HANA licenses, from hardware that they realize doing all of that activity. These are all the things that come as part and parcel of doing the data migration activity in the system. Not only that, as you're, uh, as you're looking into that part, um, you know, you are looking at data and document migration, but here is the process that you're looking at 
for doing the data migration activity. And Firoz is gonna cover more in detail of how to organize it with the right methodology. Yeah. So as we've been talking, uh, you have to start with the analysis, right? And the analysis is basically to identify all the different sources, identify the gaps between your source and the target, and then of course, put into play, you know, various remediation measures, which, which are uh, actually the third part of this particular methodology where we talk about cleaning the data, right? The second part is of course, to extract the data and uh, then you clean the extracted data as per your business rules and uh, hope by then you would have established your you know data governance and all the business rules and everything would be documented and be available and then using those you would then validate the data and once the data has been validated and this validation can happen you know at different uh, stages in different areas like if you look at an sap um, uh, uh, migration instance then uh, in SAP, you have like uh, there is a dev instance, there's a quality instance, and then there is the finally the production instance. So you would use the quality instance for doing you know various validations for checks and things like that. And once the data has been validated within that particular instance, and you see that it is working correctly, that the business processes are being supported correctly, the uh, volume of uh, data has been migrated correctly across then you are actually able to load that data into the target system uh, into the production system and once it has been loaded into the production system then you will reconcile the data with the source to ensure that the correct numbers of data have been migrated across and this whole process has to actually uh, be governed uh, you know there has to be a governance and visualization which allows you to visualize what is happening within the particular migration project you should be able to know uh, you know where your pro what has been the progress which ones which objects have been migrated which are to be migrated which are yet to be migrated what is the stage and that is what you know visualization is about so the me right methodology comprises of all these different aspects as well as governance and visualization then another part which um, uh, deepak had spoken about is actually the right team with uh, the right knowledge so if you see here, uh, you have a kind of a, an organization which uh, we have, you know, which we recommend, and uh, you know there is the uh, steering committee where you have the project managers from both the sides who are reporting into it, and then you have the different data migration consultants from the vendor side. But from the from your side, from the customer side, you have to have, uh, you know, the business users. You have, of course, then you also have to have your IT and basis teams, and then. You also have to have your functional consultants, right? Uh, maybe f like 15, 20 years ago, when I first did my, my did my first data migration project, um, one of the you know uh, like the uh, one of the requirements was that we had to extend uh, material to certain plants. And uh, you know I, I'm great at you know doing uh, you know scripts and building uh, you know uh, building different programs and things like that, but I just didn't know what was this extending. What, do, what did they mean by extending? Later on, I had to have somebody explain to me that, okay, uh, extending is a process by which we make sure that this particular material is available in this particular plant, and hence, it, there has to be an entry available in a particular, uh, you know, MRC or particular table. So that's why you need to have the functional consultants also around to be able to explain to you what is the uh, business significance of that particular data. And next, moving on, if we look at the tools for the data migration, uh, we have information steward, which is for data quality. And uh, the, uh, this is a great tool which SAP provides, which allows you to analyze you know, data from different uh, systems and uh, identify what is the quality of the data and whether the data can be moved into, you know, uh, into uh, S4. Okay, so this is the data quality tool. And the other tool is actually SAP data services. Uh, this is also a tool uh, which is you know bit, bit provided by SAP and this is one of the greatest tools for uh, you know data migration I, I'm actually going to just run through this because I don't think we have uh, too much of time left uh, but if you have any questions about this uh, definitely you know I'll be willing to answer them for you but data services really is a great tool it helps with all the different aspects of data migration especially things like you know your mapping of your source to target systems and then also things like when you want to run your validations repeatedly, 
you know, it becomes very easy when you have a tool like SAP data services, uh, which on one hand can connect to your source systems and also connect up to uh, the SAP system using things like IDOCs. So it provides a clean end-to-end -end kind of a process which uh, you can implement using uh, SAP data services, right? So, and it also, like, if you use the best practices for data migration, which is provided for S4, there's a whole host of pre-configured content which is available. So you don't have to build various things from the scratch. So you will have a framework available which will allow you to very quickly, you know, process the data, identify all the different issues, validate the issues, and then load the data into the target system. And this is basically the architecture of uh, the uh, you know data migration architecture using SAP data services. So you have the legacy data environment, and then you have the staging environment where you will you know extract and store all the data. All the cleansing and everything is actually done in the staging area. That's where the transformation is done. Then there is validation which is done within the staging area itself. That is one critical thing. You don't have to load your data into SAP to find out whether it will load or not right that is one of the critical features of this particular uh, you know best practice so you, actually we will extract all the configuration information from sap use it within the staging environment and use that to validate the data and uh, so when you load data into sap that's a heavy time heavy process right so that can be avoided using this particular architecture okay well, um Firoz, thank you yeah. and these are all the different validation objects that are available but yeah. in the interest of time, I think now what we want to do is, uh, you know, talk about some of the questions that the audience has. And folks, hope you found this webinar uh, valuable, you know, with, with great insights. But Katie, I'm going to ask you to, you know, ask about uh, the questions some of our audience has asked. And also, if you have any questions, uh, you know, hopefully you have sent them through email or through, uh, you know, you can always ask those questions in the chat box and we'd be happy to answer those questions. Katie? All right, awesome. Thanks, Deepak and Feroz. Uh, like Deepak said, I hope everyone found this webinar super informative. It does look like we got a few questions here, so I will start going through those. It looks like the first question here says, can you talk about some of the data quality parameters? Which ones can you use to assess the quality of data? And Deepak or Feroz, I will let one of you guys take that one. Yeah, I, I can uh, talk to that. Uh, actually, there are very specific parameters which have been uh, which you can use to evaluate the quality of your data. Uh, so some of the uh, parameters that we use are consistency, uh, conformity, uh, duplicates. Um, uh, then uh, uh, accuracy, uh, timeliness, uh, you know, these are some of the parameters which we can implement as business rules and we can check to see whether your data has met these rules. In fact, we implement them in Information Steward and uh, we can use that to actually validate the data. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Feroz. It looks like the next question we have here says, are, are there any other tools other than SAP data services and information store that we can use? Uh, Deepak or Feroz, I will turn that one over to you. I think Deepak already mentioned uh, this ADM tool, which is uh, another tool which is available for uh, doing uh, data migrations. Uh, and then apart from that, there are various other tools as well. And uh, for S4, uh, we have the S4 data migration cockpit uh, which can also be used for uh, data migrations. All right, awesome. And it looks like the last question here says, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the logistics of the data quality assessment? What would you need from us to get started? So we, we have a, a, like, typically we do a data quality assessment on three major masters. Uh, these are the customer master, the vendor master, and the uh, material master. Uh, these are the three big ones which uh, you know have a solid impact during a data migration and this is what we do an assessment for um, and uh, in this case depending upon your source system if your source system is sap then we can provide you with a list of tables uh, that you can extract the data from and then provide us uh, provide that to us and then we will be able to you know run the tests and then uh, tell you what is the quality of the data and how well it is suited for s4 uh, if your source system is some other uh, thing other than SAP, 
then we will have to have a discussion. We will have to see how we can identify what are the tables that contain uh, these three, uh, you know, uh, objects, and then you know extract the data, and then we will have to do a slightly different kind of a test uh, validation of that data, and then provide you with the results. There was one more question here, and it says, "What is your stance on the use of data migration cockpit?" Um, Data migration cockpit, yes, it has all the features, uh, but to me, when you talk about uh, automated and repeatable process, uh, I think there the convenience of uh, using, you know, data services kind of, uh, you know, uh, beats the data beats the data migration cockpit. And in fact, uh, recently we were at a uh, at a customer. Uh, it, this, this was a customer uh, in uh, Australia that, uh, you know, I was do, uh, working with them on data migration and then uh, this same question came up as to, you know, should we use uh, the data migration cockpit or should we use uh, data services? But when you look at it from a process standpoint, right, where, you know, you extract the data, transform it, do the cleansing and all those things, and then you want to push the data into the, uh, into the uh, target system, then you know, the uh, information, I mean, sorry, data services as a platform uh, performs much better and it's more uh, convenient to use, right? But let's say if you're migrating from SAP to SAP and you know that, you know, your data does not require any changes or any this thing, then perhaps maybe you can consider a data migration call. All right, awesome. Well, thanks so much, Deepak and Feroz, and thank you everyone for some time with us today and we will see you next month for our next webinar and like we mentioned uh, we are offering that data quality assessment so you can feel free to email me Deepak or Froze and you can see all of their emails there at the top and we will see you guys next month